In the last few years, we've seen quite a few products from celebrities, fitness influencers that promise to take your mental and physical performance, strength to the next level. But as we saw with things like Prime by KSI and Logan Paul, although a very tasty drink, the hydration slash performance boost that it promised was really not supported by much scientific evidence. Similarly, a couple of years ago, Greg Doucet had released a terkesterone supplement that was straight up a scam. Terkesterone. You're stronger, you have more muscle, you flex in the mirror, you look leaner, thicker, fuller, better. But more recently, Chris Williamson and James Smith have released their own focus drink, Newtonic. Now, a disclaimer. I am personally not extremely familiar with their content, although I follow Chris Williamson on Instagram and I have watched some of his podcasts. They both seem like extremely likable dudes, and I was surprised to see that they released a product that claimed to be a game changer for focus. Now, let me introduce a new tonic to you. As they've said themselves in some of their promo videos, some of the people that have used their product have claimed it is like a real life limitless pill. But let's take a step back here. So, Chris Williamson and James Smith. Yes, cheers, mate surveyed their audience. They wanted to see if their audience had any issues. And many people in their audience mentioned that focus and distractions were an issue. James Smith himself said in one of the promo videos that they wanted to make something that would solve the problem that their audience had. So essentially, they took the research and fixed the problem by making Newtonic. This is a direct quote. Newtonic is marketed as a drink for mental focus, mental clarity, and it is marketed as an evidence-based, scientifically-based drink that is essentially as solid as a drink of that caliber can get. James Smith himself said that Newtonic was the drink he wanted to have when he was young, as he also had issues with focus, distractions, and so on and so forth. All this is good and all, and if you go on the drinks website, you see that there is research, there are studies there, there is a clear supplement label with no proprietary blends, and overall, you have two creators that are very likable, that have been putting out good content, have been fighting misinformation, at least to a certain extent. Impressive. Well done. We made it. We made it and have platformed people like Dr. Mike Israel, among others, come up with their own product. At face value, things seem pretty legit. Studies, good price, and overall a product by two trustworthy individuals in the fitness and in general, the productivity slash self-improvement community. But what happens when we look behind the curtain? Is the research that has been cited and has been presented as solid as they claim to be, or do things crumble when you start reading the fine print? As we've talked about before on this channel, when evaluating research and scientific claims, things can go from solid to not solid whatsoever real quick, especially if you start digging into the details, looking at the different studies that are used versus just solely taking the conclusion of a study and essentially summarizing it. So without further ado, let's look at whether Newtonic is a scam. and whether Chris Williamson and James Smith may have some explaining. When presenting the product, they mentioned that they did the due diligence, they looked at studies in human adults and not studies in rats. In a video talking about what went into making the drink, uh, there was a heavy focus on the research side of things and the fact that they wanted to include studies that were done in human adults and not in rats, as you often see. However, let's break down each ingredient that is used in Newtonic and see if the claims that are made to support it are actually legit. The first ingredient that we see on their page is Cognizant, aka Cytocholine, which is a naturally occurring substance in the body that plays a crucial role in brain health. Without getting into too many details, Cytocholine is like a natural brain booster that helps maintain and improve brain health which makes it a relatively popular supplement for cognitive support. Now, that's all great and well, but let's look at the main studies that have been cited for its support. 
So as far as the first study goes, we have 15 year olds that took cyticoline for 28 days straight, supplementing with it every single day and saw an improvement in cognitive performance. Before we talk about some of the terms and conditions there, let's also look at study two. So study two had 60 healthy female adults around 47 years old that were randomly assigned to either a supplement group or a placebo group, very similar design to the previous study, one pill every day for 28 days. And they were assessed at the continuous performance test uh, two, AKA CPT two. Essentially after 28 days of supplementing with Cognizant, they made less errors overall. Now, there are some terms and conditions when it comes to these findings and how much stock we can put in them. The first study was in adolescents, which doesn't completely take away from their product. However, if I'm not mistaken, the product is mainly marketed for adults, um, as they also said when uh, they were planning essentially to look at research specifically in adults. And the most important um, term and condition for me personally is the fact that supplementation was continuous for 28 days, 250 or 500 milligrams. That essentially means that if you want to see an effect, some effect uh, from supplementing with cyticoline, you likely have to take it daily, which then brings up the question of how effective is a drink that I'm not sure if everybody who consumes it on a daily basis, but is that a potential asterisk that goes next to the effects of the drink, given the fact that you're likely not going to see a ton of cognition boost just by taking it a few days here and there whenever you feel like you need that boost. However, the first ingredient that is used is somewhat evidence-based. Sure, not a game changer, not ADHD medication by no means, but at least some promising evidence behind it. The next ingredient is rhodiola rosea, which has been traditionally used for its ability to essentially alleviate stress-induced fatigue. Now, the mechanisms behind rhodiola rosea and its adaptogenic and nootropic effects are complex, but nonetheless, there is some evidence in human trials where rhodiola rosea showed some promise uh, when it came to alleviating fatigue caused by psychological stress. The first study that is cited on the website is a randomized placebo controlled double blind crossover study with a washout period. 56 fake doctors, AKA physicians that were doing night shifts, essentially took part and a fatigue index was calculated based on a bunch of parameters and they essentially wanted to check whether supplementation would lower their fatigue index pre and post the intervention. Interestingly, and this is something that you won't see on the website, all the patients completed the study and had no adverse effects uh, or adverse events. However, and as presented in the study itself, the total fatigue index was significantly better after two weeks of taking Rhodiola Rosea, but there were only significant differences just for that period. So as the authors put it, the only significant change is seen in the varum control group between period one and period two with a change in performance or fatigue index of approximately 20%. This is an example of where the fine print becomes important. If you read the summary that is on the website, it makes it appear as Rhodiola rosea is far more effective than what we actually see in the study. Doctors took it during a period where they were also going through night shifts. It helped decrease overall fatigue by 20% for a period of time, but then after a bit, it didn't seem to do much. However, let's not put all our stock in one study and very briefly look at the totality of evidence around Rhodiola rosea, focusing on a study called Rhodiola rosea for physical and mental fatigue, a systematic review. This systematic review essentially concluded that research regarding Rhodiola rosea's efficacy is contradictory. While some evidence suggests that the herb may be helpful in enhancing physical performance and alleviating mental fatigue, methodological flaws limit accurate assessment of efficacy and more randomized controlled trials are needed in order to truly understand the efficacy of Rhodiola rosea for fatigue. So again, we see some data that supports that, hey, maybe Rhodiola rosea can have some effect at alleviating mental fatigue that comes from stress, but the current totality of scientific evidence is not really solid and does not allow us to conclusively say that, hey, this is actually going to make a big difference. However, again, we see that there is at least something behind that ingredient and it is not a complete scam like we see with many supplements out there. But stick around 
because there are many more ingredients in this wonderful product. And what you may see at the end will shock you, <laughs> building tension. Moving on to L-theanine. So instead of looking simply at the studies on their website, we will look at a systematic review that looked at the cognitive enhancing effects of caffeine and L-theanine together. So caffeine and L-theanine are natural compounds found primarily in tea and coffee respectively, and their combination has shown improvements in short-term sustained attention and overall cognition. Reverse task-related mind wandering and improved inhibitory control were also seen uh, among boys with ADHD. Dab, shout out ADHD gang. While improvements in acute stress and an increased amount of work were noted in a population of men and women aged 50 to 69 in Japan. So after reviewing the entire literature, the systematic review concluded that the combination of those two shows favorable clinical significance in the domains of attention, memory, cognition, and hyperactivity. And it is overall concluded that the combination of L-theanine and caffeine is likely a safe and an effective cognitive enhancer. However, like with everything, future research is still needed to explain everything um, that has been found thus far, as well as many of the limitations included. However, it is also important to note that in the current literature, the doses of caffeine and theanine that have been tested are not the exact same as those found in Newtonic, and that is one of the potential limitations, but we're seeing another thumbs up, which brings me to the next ingredient, which is caffeine. Now, the caffeine dose that has been used in Newtonic is slightly lower than your traditional monster energy drink, at least here in Europe, which has 150 milligrams of caffeine. For cognition specifically, the dose of caffeine that has been used, which is 120 milligrams, based on the current scientific evidence and one of the studies that they cite, is likely enough to give you a bit of a boost as far as cognitive performance and attention goes. Higher doses of caffeine at like three to seven milligrams per kilo of body weight ingested approximately an hour before exercise can enhance physical performance. There is a large inter-individual variation when it comes to caffeine ingestion, but the caffeine dose used in Newtonic is solid enough for its purpose. It is not a pre-workout drink. It's not meant to get you to be hyper and fucking twitching. In this case, they just want you to focus more. And if you overdo it with caffeine and you're there jittery and fucking going off your absolute mind, like I am right now, because I have had a lot of caffeine, that would be counterproductive to your focus. So thumbs up for the caffeine dosage used. It is just the right amount for what it's supposed to do. Moving on to ginseng, which unfortunately has no convincing evidence of a cognitive effect in general. So ginseng panax has been used to treat disease and to combat aging for thousands of years. And currently it is a bit of a hype supplement in the herbal bestsellers list. And it is a quite widely used herbal product. But the current totality of scientific evidence shows that although ginseng appears to have some beneficial effects on cognition and behavior, as well as quality of life, more research is needed in order to actually tell you conclusively that it can do something. And the title of the study sort of spoils that by saying that, hey, at the moment, the current evidence is not really that great. And that essentially brings us to the end of the list. There is also B vitamins, uh, but I don't think I need to go over those. Uh, they're literally in every drink. So, is Newtonic a scam, you ask, Dr. Pat? Real doctor, no gimmicks. The answer is a soft no. It is not a scam. It is arguably a solid attempt at creating um, focus slash distraction improvement drink. However, if you're somebody who's finding it very hard to focus consistently and you're seeing that no matter the caffeine, the L-theanine, the whatever, um, the, no matter the YouTube videos where they get you to study with some other guy studying with you, no matter the motivational quotes, no matter the actual drive, no matter the financial debt that you're in that is hovering over your head and telling you, bro, you gotta focus on this. If you're seeing that shit is not getting right, you may need one, therapy, and two, actual medication, because you may have some actual condition that is making it exceptionally hard for you to focus. Which brings me to the next point. Yes, 
this drink is not a scam, it's a soft no as far as scam goes, because obviously some of the claims made around its effectiveness are somewhat hyperbolic. Plus, in order to actually get the most out of the majority of ingredients in there, you likely need to be taking it on a daily basis or very frequently. But the good guys over at Newtonic, from what I checked, have kept the price in order and it is along the prices of a Red Bull drink or just any energy drink out there. If you're an energy drink enjoyer, you like those creators, you wanna support their thing, and in general, you wanna placebo yourself, that you're gonna get a bit more focus out of this drink, and obviously with some scientific evidence showing that, hey, the ingredients in, in there may help you, at least to a certain extent, to get a bit more out of it versus having a Red Bull, go for it. However, what I didn't like was a comparison uh, <laughs> where they smartly compared Newtonic to energy drinks and coffee. If we throw energy drinks out of the way, coffee overall is an absolute beast of, um, it's not a substance, an absolute beast of a drink to consume in terms of its overall uh, health benefits, cognition boost, brain health. It is just one of the best things that you can consume in drink form. Um, if you are after something that improves your health and also gives you focus. So black coffee has no calories, super cheap, easy to make. And when we look at meta-analytic data on its effects on health and obviously brain health, um, but health specifically, coffee is there flexing on your tonic, something uh, that my guys did smartly because they put it with energy drinks uh, and sort of said, oh, this is made for focus. Uh, no, the, the, these are made for energy. This is made for focus. And they sort of lumped it all together. I get it. They're playing their game. Fuck do they care about some random fatso um, calling it out. But it's facts. Coffee, uh, I would say, beats Newtonic on any day in terms of its overall value uh, that it gives you and its overall bang for its buck. So overall, I declare Newtonic and non-scam, but with an asterisk next to it, Obviously, it's not going to be what will get you to focus if you have deeper issues. If you're somebody who consumes caffeine and likes the flavor of the drink, likes the creators, solid option as an alternative to a Red Bull or a Monster. Um, if you're a coffee enjoyer, potentially consider sticking with good old coffee. And yes, Big Coffee has paid me to say this and I will die for Big Coffee, even though I'm actively cheating on Big Coffee with a zero sugar Monster Energy drink. guys. You can sponsor me too. We are desperate out here. Just send me something. But that was it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification icon. Express interest at myodap.com for the best training app. An app legitimately coach, create you a custom program without any templates based on any bullshit configuration your crazy mind, your Newtonic fueled mind can think of. My Adept can do it. And I'm not capping. You want a two-day program that is 15 minutes uh, per session and focuses on biceps, upper traps, and glutes, it will do it for you. You want a six-day per week push-pull legs routine with an emphasis on side delts, it will do it. You want to work out two hours a day and do mostly legs? Well, then seek medical help, my friend. But the app can hook you up there as well. 10% off for Ascal Apparel. You know the deal. We're sponsored athletes out there. And next time you see anybody selling you stuff and citing research, be skeptical. These guys here did their best. But as you saw, even with the best intentions, things were not as hype as presented. And that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Dabin is so back, baby.